Craig, you actually uh, have a history with the general, right? Yes. Starting 20 years ago? 20 years ago when I was a cadet at West Point, I was assigned to his unit as a lowly intern. And we both participated in a 2,000 person airborne drop over Fort Benning, Georgia with the uh, uh, 75th Ranger Regiment. Um, and then about 10 years ago this month, we, we met in Kabul when I was uh, General McChrystal's Pentagon counterpart, and now here at Bloomberg. Right, exactly. So you've had a, a, an interesting path to the position that you're currently in with the Brunswick Group. Um, as you just mentioned, you were in the Army. You were a Ranger, decorated combat veteran. Um, you served in the Obama administration, then at Facebook for five years, and now here at Brunswick. So what is Brunswick, and what, what are you doing there? Uh, so Brunswick's a, a global firm with uh, 23 offices serving clients in 50 countries. And we advise C-suites on critical issues uh, at the intersection of politics, finance, and society. And I sit within our digital practice and advise leaders on uh, digital media and how they can advance their leadership uh, in a new domain. Right. So that's, um, that leads us, of course, to why you're here today. Uh, Brunswick and you launched uh, uh, in the last few days a, a research project, research-based project, looking at CEOs and uh, their use of social media, digital media, their digital presence, and um, and drew some, I think, interesting findings about uh, what employees expect, what shareholders expect from uh, leaders in terms of the digital communication. And so I, I wanted to talk first about why you did this study and explain how what the study actually is and how large it is. Sure. So uh, we touched on my, my career path. I have been fascinated by the practice and application of leadership in a variety of domains. And I think that one of the major trends over the last 10 years has been the rise of social and digital media. And you can't help but see an influence on that um, digital domain in the arena of leadership. So we, we set out to explore how is leadership being redefined in a connected, in a connected world. Uh, and we came at it uh, in sort of two major directions. The first is we went and we asked a variety of audiences what they expected from leaders. Uh, we asked employees, we asked financial readers, and we asked investors. Um, and then we looked at the supply side of that equation to see what's the behavior of leaders in the S&P 500 and the top 350 companies in the FTSE. How are they showing up on digital media? And are they meeting the expectations of these audiences? Right. So let, let's uh, talk about some of what you found. And I think you have a slide here. One second. Ah, great. Um, so across the top, this is sort of what we learned from audiences. So this was the first was really surprising to us, um, an almost 21 point jump in one year of investors, uh, institutional investors using digital and social media to follow CEOs. Um, the second is we looked at active financial readers. And you define financial readers as, as what? Uh, in the last two weeks, had they read uh, consumed information from a defined set of financial publications like Bloomberg or the Wall Street Journal. Um, and there the finding was even stronger in terms of their expectations from CEO communications on social media, particularly in a crisis. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the speed and scale and also the signal of accountability that a social media post from a CEO in that situation indicates. Um, and then in the talent equation, which I know we'll talk about later as a group, uh, this was a stark finding that by a more than two to one ratio, employees prefer to work for a CEO who's active on digital and social media. Uh, so it's surprising that while customers and competitors and investors, employees have all moved online, for the most part, Fortune 500, S&P 500 CEOs are still catching up. Right. Um, I think that might be a good time to ask the folks here in this room, those of you who are leaders, not just CEOs, but um, COOs, CFOs, et cetera, how many of you, uh, just raise your hand, are active on social media? OK, keep those hands up. How many of you have used social media in the last two weeks? 
Okay, so pretty good. Yeah, so, so actually, this you over-represent. Right, they've, they've already bought in, right? <laughs> so why is it then that only 29% of the S&P 500 CEOs are active? What, what explains that? Two factors, uh, in my view. The first is they're not convinced yet of the business value and the ROI. Uh, and I think second, maybe more importantly, is lack of confidence and comfort. Right. Um, for a generation of leaders who aren't digital natives, didn't grow up using social media, uh, it seems quite unknown, unfamiliar, and a place where it's easy to make a mistake that has uh, a large audience right. uh, to view it. So Carol raised uh, the example of Elon Musk. You know, I think probably other than his wealth, I think no CEO wants to be like Elon Musk on social media, right? Because <laughs> That will just get you in trouble um, with regulators, your investors. Um, so we'll, we'll so talk. I think he gets a lot of things right. Right. Um, it's highly authentic. It is he's, that. He's consistent. Um, Consistently. He's in, right. uses a lot of great visuals to make his point. <laughs> right. Um, but you need guardrails. Any communication, whether it's a digital media or traditional media, um, you need a team behind you, uh, you need a strategy. Um, and so with some improvement, you could be even more effective for the company's purposes. So let's show them um, part of the end result of, of your work, which is a ranking of 100 of the uh, top CEOs on, in, in terms of their use of social media. Right. Yes, yeah, so we collected 100,000 data points on 790 CEOs. Um, and then built a, a scoring algorithm uh, to rank the top one, the top 100. And you all, uh, we sent you, I believe, by email a, a copy of, of the uh, study and the survey, and you also have it in, in your uh, gift bags. So we'll uh, sort of scrolling down a bit from the from the site, brunswickgroup.com/connectedleadership. Uh, you can go in here and find inspiration, no matter what industry you're in. So the top slot is is Doug McMillan at Walmart. So if you zoom in, you can um, find basic information about his company, his score, uh, some basic analysis from Brunswick, all and, of his official accounts. And you're saying, so Doug McMillan is the number one what? Connected leader. OK. According so it's to not your... popularity. He doesn't have the most followers on social media. But when you really dig into the engagement and the quality of the response from his audience, uh, that's one of the things that really stands out with Doug. Okay, so let's dig a little bit more into that and look at what is it that these top leaders are doing? What, what constitutes good social media policy at this level of CEO? Among the top 50, uh, we compared them to the rest of the set. They post on average twice as much as other CEOs. Uh, about 98% of their posts have a visual that was Clearly, they, uh, they understand the emotional connection you can drive with a visual and its ability to cut across language uh, barriers. Um, and the content comes across as much more personal and authentic. Um, so I thought we'd zoom in on, on Doug um, to get a sense of how he does this. And you don't start off at number one. His journey has been a four-year journey. About this time, four years ago, he started with a very humble, out of focus photo on Instagram. <laughs> a year later, launched on, on Facebook, um, and then has subsequently added LinkedIn uh, to his franchise. Um, one, one of the things I thought was most powerful when, when we shared this finding with Walmart, they came back to us with quotes from associates about what this meant to them and how inspiring and motivating it was as an associate to hear directly from the CEO, uh, which supports one of the findings of the survey. Uh, after pay and benefits, the next most powerful indicator of retention at a company is direct and transparent leadership. Uh, direct and transparent leadership. After pay and benefits. After pay and benefits, well right. ahead of their connection to a larger mission for the company, the length of their commute, we asked about 20 different factors, and that was, that was number three after pay and benefits. Right, OK. Um, so I, I had the pleasure of going to uh, Arkansas to see Walmart's annual shareholder meeting in 2016. 
where they did something novel with Facebook Live. Uh, their shareholders are a little bit different than other shareholder meetings. They bring in 15,000 employees for the Walmart universe around the world. Uh, it's a bit of a pep rally. They have the foam number one fingers. Katy Perry performed. James <laughs> Corden was the MC, And Doug gives a state of the company address. Um, in the past, if they wanted to reach and connect with all their employees, they'd have to share that video through an internet to an employee base that mostly don't have emails. With Facebook, they were able to invite all 2.3 million Walmart employees to watch in real time. And this is what it looks like. I want to say hello to every Walmart associate that's joining from around the world. I want to tell you we're here in Fayetteville, Arkansas at our shareholders meeting, and we wish that you were all here with us, but you're, we're glad that you've joined virtu virtually. I've got some of your fellow associates here that want to say hello. Turn that camera towards them. So they had more than a million people watch that video in its first 24 hours. This was one step amongst many to turn the company into a community, into a connected company. Um, and you can see with you know, a couple of other platforms on Facebook and Instagram, he's not afraid to take uh, the candid photo um, with employees and share it. Um, on LinkedIn, he, he wrote an extensive post about uh, merchandising. Um, and describing a sort of a fun contest he had with employees where the winning store, he went and washed cars at that store. Hmm. And he has a certain credibility because he started at Walmart 26 years ago unloading trucks. So he's really with the, with the employees, and that comes across in his social media. Okay, so let's go back to why there, there aren't that many of, at that level who are in, that engaged. And I think this gets to the risk-reward question you know, that uh, we talked a little bit about. You know, you know, let's be honest, Doug McMillan is the CEO of a huge company. He has a staff that I'm sure is just devoted to his social media accounts, and they are monitoring it. And they're, the guardrails that you mentioned, um, they're not going to let him swerve off course mm -hmm. too much. So for, for CEOs and other leaders of smaller organizations who don't have that kind of support, how are they to make the decision about what to post, what not to post, how engaged to be, if they don't feel they have those guardrails put in place? Start small. So you don't need three channels. Pick the, pick the platform that makes the most sense for you and the resources that you have. Um, and we can chat a bit about the differences between the platforms. But it's like Instagram, for instance, is a relatively simple to capture a photo or a short video and share it. You don't need a doctorate in social media to right. use the platform. Um, you have a large addressable audience. Um, it's harder to make a mistake with a visual than it is with a tweet. Sometimes. But yeah, um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, again, let's let's talk a little bit more then about the reward. Though you know, we we've seen you've just said that um, transparency and engagement from the leader is the number three um, quality that employees are looking at. There is this clear correlation, I think you would say, right, between attracting talent and retaining talent by your use of communi digital communication, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 60% uh, of employees say they go and look for a CEO's social media profiles before joining a company. Huh. Um, that, that surprised us, quite savvy in their sort of research of an organization. Right. Um, I, I think this is part of what it means to lead at scale today. So in a world where, say, your organization was the size of this room, um, we can have individual con conversations that uh, under 200 people, you can know everyone's name in the, in the organization. When you're operating at a scale of thousands or tens of thousands of employees, no CEO or leader can have that sort of face-to-face -face interaction and engagement. Um, and so you need other tools that allow you to sort of scale your presence and your um, and allow the broader organization to buy into uh, the mission and the purpose that you articulate uniquely as a CEO, as the chief storyteller and the chief purpose officer of the company. The other thing that I think is important um, is 
you and I have talked about this, is this isn't about popularity, right? You're, you don't have to be a Kardashian, right, to be an effective social media leader. In fact, that's not the goal, mm -hmm. right? Um, how, how should they think about that, that equation? It's, it's an easy vanity metric to follow, um, the number of followers that you have, but it's largely irrelevant if, you haven't, if you're not connecting with the right audience. Uh, so when we're working with clients, it's, there's a careful and important first step of articulating um, you know, what is your message, what do you represent, and who do you want to speak with, and then constructing the, the channels and the engagement strat strategy around those audiences. So if you, have, you may have only have 500 followers, but those could be investors or... If, let's say you're a defense manufacturer and you, you're sort of your sales universe are 300 defense buyers globally. If you have 200, if you're connected with 200 of them on LinkedIn and they are following your thought leadership, that's far more effective for you than for having 10,000 followers that don't map to your business needs. So always start with the business strategy first. And you mentioned this about Elon Musk, but consistency, why is that important? Uh, it, you don't have to post daily or 10 times a day. Nobody's expecting a CEO to match the sort of the president's tempo, uh, nor should they aspire to that. Um, but pick a cadence that you can stick with consistently because there are expectations from those who are following you to hear from you on a, on a regular basis. Um, the biggest risk is sort of launching a profile um, sort of investing very heavily and posting daily for a month and then disappearing. Right. Then a crisis happens with your company and you're trying to reestablish yourself to that audience. It, it's not going to come across as an authentic communication. In the midst of a, of a, a crisis, even potentially an existential crisis to the future of your company, um, I think some CEOs may think, oh, you know, social media too risky. I just I need to buckle down and work my way through this this problem. Is that the right response? Well, of course you need to work through the problem, and you need to communicate with your own, you know, your own team inside the organization, and you're going to have outside stakeholders. In a crisis, it, that can be the most difficult time for the media to tell your story. Uh, so if someone else won't tell your story, you should. You have an exceptional amount of control and precision in your targeting with social media. So it absolutely needs to be a part of every company's toolkit. Um, every company has a social media channel, more, more or less, for the company. In those sorts of situations, you want to hear directly from a leader taking accountability and, and s describing what the path forward is going to be. It is far more powerful, and we see much stronger engagement when a CEO is making that communication on a channel that they own versus a corporate channel. Right. You said something backstage to me that I thought was interesting, which is that this is uh, about being a modern CEO, not about modern communications. What do you mean by that? Communications is a, is a part of leadership, um, and certainly leadership at, at scale. Um, I think it's, when we're talking about sort of social CEOs, it's often mistaken, like this is about profile raising, about visibility, about popularity. It, it's not about those things. This is a part of your, this is a part of your le leadership toolkit. Um, I learned two things in the Army from great leaders like General McChrystal. You need to set the example as a leader, and you need to authentically connect with the people inside and outside your organization. Doing that today, part of that leadership solution and be setting a very visible and personal example is using modern platforms. Right. I should also mention that Craig is also a best-selling New York Times best-selling author for his book uh, of his experience in the military called The Unforgiving Minute, uh, which I recommend that you read um, because it does fuse your sort of insights into what you learned in the military with the real world. Uh, <laughs> So um, you're going to be around. You'll be here at lunch as well. Yes. So if people have questions, uh, feel free to, to seek him out. And thank you very much, Craig. Thank you, Mark.